There is a $5,000 reward for the arrest and conviction of Zineb Shaheen and Ronald Richter, who are both employees for the Administration for Children's Services. Please call us if you have information knowing about their involvement in the conspiracy to keep little DeAndrea Durrell incarcerated in the foster care no system for five years based on perjurious lies. Hi, my name is DeAndrea, and today we're going to do another 9-11 truth story movement. I have with me three very special guests, uh, Dr. Jim Fetzer, um, I have Joseph Carranza and Mr. Dean Lauren, uh, attorney. I just wanted to mention something before I introduce you to our first guest, Dr. Jim Fetzer. Uh, the day of 9-11, when I got a phone call that there was Terrorism Act and that uh, the planes went into the World Trade Center, I told the caller, oh, just relax, don't worry about it. It's the government did this. And they said, what are you talking about? I said, didn't you ever read the book, Behold a Pale Horse? I said, this book wasn't just written by anybody. This book was written by somebody who worked for the Defense Department. He worked for the Defense Department. This book was published in 1993, which means it was written years before that. They t he was told that a disaster was going to be created by our own government and that major disaster was going to be created for the purpose of causing a war in the Middle East and it was going to be for the oil lines and the poppy seed. So Dr. Fetzer, what do you think of this book? Have you ever read it? Sure, then there's other books written as well about this, but this was written by somebody who actually worked for the Defense Department. This is William Cooper. Yes. Who did a lot of re research on the death of JFK as well. Yes. And I must say that our research suggests that the theses of his book are correct and well-founded. Exactly. He, he goes into implants and everything. That, that, um, so uh, tell our guests where you're from and what, uh, what is your um, purpose in life now? When 2005 I founded Scholars for 9-11 Truth, which has grown to have around 300 members. I retired after 35 years of college teaching in June and moved to Madison, Wisconsin, in part to devote more of my effort to this matter. I'm a former Marine Corps officer, and along the way I've published 28 books. Very good, very impressive. So Joe, um, our friend here, Joe Carenza, is also a part of the 9-11 movement, and he told me, um, oh, he knows you very well, and... Uh, well, I'm familiar with his work. I'm familiar with his organization. Um, as a military officer, can you uh, convey to the uh, our viewing audience um, some information about Operation Northwoods? Well, Operation Northwoods was a development of the uh, Joint Chiefs in order to create a phony pretext for invading Cuba. A uh, deception. Uh, yes, absolutely. Dwight Eisenhower uh, was uh, very upset with Castro's rise to power and instructed Lyman Limnitzer, the then chairman of the Joint Chiefs, that if they didn't have a real reason to invade Cuba, they should invent one. Among the schemes they concocted were to, if the, if the Atlas rocket carrying popular astronaut John Glenn into space were to blow up, they would have irrefutable evidence that Castro did it. The only way I can imagine that would be possible would be if they had done it themselves. Another of these schemes was to take a commercial airliner, fill it full of college students on a holiday, fly it over Cuba and shoot it down. In the fine print, they suggested they'd offload the students at a secret base and fill the plane with dummies, but can you imagine one of these students turning up alive in the United States or one of these dummies in Cuba? They even talked about how the list of casualties would inflame the American people. This has been exposed by research by James Bamford doing studies of the National Security Agency in his book, Body of Evidence. Body of Secrets. Correct. Excuse me. Body of Secrets, thank you. That's very interesting. That, so what do you think, Dean? Uh, Did you know about this? Uh, actually, uh, I'm more familiar, I, I'm doing research now on the Vatican Nazi connections from World War II and the investments in the Americas, which I believe are one of the main forces behind the ground zero demolition uh, today because we are seeing the entire rehab of our transportation system that is going to revolutionize all of the New York Eastern Hub, 
the Long Island Railroad, Penn Central, Metro, we're bringing in super speed trains. Uh, all the airports will be hooked up, and this could only be possible by the two towers being taken down. And of course, I have to ask the question, which parish is in control of the land that the towers sits on? Because each section of Manhattan is controlled by a parish. And I would like to say that our studio and Lincoln Center is controlled by St. Paul the Apostle Parish, which is run by Fordham University, the Jesuits. Very interesting. But the, uh, but the fact is, it, it wasn't, they weren't taken down for uh, any purpose of, of manipulating transportation. It was just the purpose of creating a disaster, a disaster to dismantle our Constitution, to, uh, to create martial law, to put fear into people. Do you, I, I don't know what they do in Massachusetts, but in um, New York, when you get on a bus or a subway, they say, um, uh, we have the right to search your, your backpacks and your large packages. Because you're on public transportation. Yeah. Now, do, are they doing that where you live? Uh, or not yet in Madison, Wisconsin, Wisconsin but, right. but, but uh, everything you're saying is, is right-headed. We've discovered a lot of evidence even about the motives involved here. For example, that Larry Silverstein had insured the, the World Trade Center for $3.5 billion against terrorist attacks, and because there were two planes, he sought to collect seven billion dollars and the Wasn't the that towers. an interesting coincidence? It is, it is, it <laughs> is. And there were problems with asbestos in the towers. The Port Authority wanted him to get it out. But can you imagine putting scaffolding around 110 story buildings? Mm. Plus there were occupancy problems. So he basically had a couple of gigantic white elephants. You couldn't do a controlled demolition on the towers because it would release the asbestos. So he had a problem. Trust me, it was released anyway. It was released anyway, <laughs> but of course, uh, in, in, in a fashion for which he could account and would not be held responsible. Donald Rumsfeld, the day before 9-11, announced to Congress the Pentagon was, had lost track of $2.3 trillion. And it's astonishing that he would do that on a Monday as an experienced politician. It's kind of news you want to release on a Friday so it doesn't develop legs, the reporters don't dog you. It's as though he knew something was going to wipe from consciousness that missing 2.3 trillion and the next day he would be able to ask for hundreds of billions more in military spending and criticize those Democrats who've been raising questions about military expenditures, which is exactly what happened. Right. And on a, on a Monday. <laughs> on a Monday. And George Bush, you know, came in wanting to be a war president. He had decided from his vast study of American history that the great presidents were the war presidents. The, the military industrial complex had an interest in testing new generations of weapons, many of which were derived from the Star Wars research program. And of course, outfits like Halliburton stood to gain 100 billion no-bid contracts for feeding our troops garbage. Yeah. And ultimately, there was an ideological aspect to all of this, too, from the Project for the New American Century, which believed there was an unprecedented opportunity for America, the sole remaining superpower, to create an empire greater than any the world had ever seen, and by moving aggressively into the Middle East, and none of this is to mention, of course, the more crass craving to take control of those oil fields in Iraq where Dick Cheney said that was the real prize because there's more oil and it's cheaper to extract than anywhere else in the world. Then why is it our uh, cost of oil for our cars is going up? <laughs> well, there's something